Welcome to the official catch up. Today I've got Kevin Smith, co manager of Glen Ross. Manager of Glen Ross. How are you? Not, not bad, how are you? Yeah, doing, doing good. And uh, how are you keeping through this, Kevin? Uh, well, fortunately, or unfortunately, how you look at that, I'm still working. Nothing's changed for me apart from the shifts. So I'm still working. Obviously, there's no football, so uh, that's no great. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty much all I do apart from go to work. So I could have. Uh, <laughs> When you miss the football, it's, you, you kind of find yourself, well, what else am I going to do with myself? Yeah, because, well, football is obviously an outlet for a lot of people, so I think people are missing that, that sort of side of it. Well, again, I've, I've not got any kids or anything, no, so, so it's not as if I've got, I've got to homeschool the kids, it's not as if I've got massive, well, my wife would probably say different, massive of jobs around the house today, so it's, uh, again, it's really just... I'm going to work, coming home and then going to work because there's, there's really no football for us. Eh? And I, I get that there's worse things in the world happening now, but you, you just don't see it when you've got that football mentality. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've spoke to a few guys like uh, Mark Adams at Stirling Uni and pretty much his whole life uh, has been football. I think he had said he hadn't missed a game since he was about 11 or something like that. Aye, I, I, and I totally get that, and even probably worse so for your full time guys because that's that's their job, that's what they know, and they probably they don't have a clue what to do themselves. Probably. Yeah, yeah, and it's t- it's definitely tough, and obviously there's been a sort of new announcement by uh, you know the first minister Nicola Sturgeon that that fans won't be expected to be in the you know football stadiums for quite some time. So who knows, mate? Who knows when it's going to end? I know, and I just seen the coronavirus uh, update there from the the SFA saying it's the tenth of June. They suspended it uh, again, so that's another couple of months away, really. Yeah, but it's unprecedented times. But I'm glad, you know, I always say it, but I'm I'm glad for like see yourself coming on and chatting just to get a wee bit of normal football chat. I'm sure uh, I'll have part two, three, and four uh, by the time it's all over. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I that's the great thing about football. Everybody's got a great opinion on it, and we've all got our self-interest. Um, so everybody's got something to speak about. You, you never get away from it. No, yeah, no. Well, that's something. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, one of the, the the reasons we've got you on is obviously to to, to speak about Glen Rothes. And uh, one thing I've got to say about Glen Rothes, and it might just be because I've got Hella Beef uh, and Kelty beside me, but I didn't really know too much about Glen Rothes. I know they won the the Scottish Junior Cup back in the seventies, but um, I guess, I guess it's maybe because Kelly and Hilla Beef have sort of been the sort of kind of dominant teams over this way, I guess. Well, you know what? That, you know what? That, that pretty much sums it up for me because Glen Rothes is it's a massive town. It's a population of about 40,000. Um, it's kind of fell away, like you said, from the 70s. It fell away in the recent, away in the recent years. I played there back in 2014, I think it was, 2013, 2014. And... Even since then, we got pipped on the last day for promotion. And since then, it's kind of stagnated for a while. And then last year, we kind of hit rock bottom. So the start of this season was a kind of starting fresh. But it just goes to show you how, like you're saying, not knowing a lot about Glen Office and with it being a massive area. And it is a massive club. It's won the Scottish Cup. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's always been there in the bouts without really, really, really kicking on. You know, Hill of Beef have, have always been one of the clubs that have, people want to play for. And it's very much the same like Kelly. Look at Kelly, they've kicked on so much. Yeah. So we're, really, we're starting the fresh as of last year. Um, really putting a pathway in. Uh, Robbie, John and Jamie started the Young Glen. So we now have teams from front fours all the way up to 11 aside now. So we're really trying to build the foundations and have a proper club for the community. Because yeah. it, it doesn't... It does, it's, you look at Glen Office, Glen Office and they've got so many youth teams going about and we were the only ones that didn't have a youth team set up or a pathway set up and we had the only junior team in that in that area. It was kind of a shame, but you know what? We're, we're doing it now and we're, we're off and we're up and running and hopefully we'll see fruits of labour in years to come. Yeah, yeah, and it was similar to when I spoke to the guys at um, Inverkeven Hillfield Swifts because I went, I went to Inverkeven and uh, I think it's different for them because they play in the sort of Lovian leagues, uh, youth level. But I, you know, I was mm-hmm. never sort of 
Hellfield Swifts that, that were sort of the talk, basically, was probably like, say, maybe Rasai Freck or obviously Hella Beef and Kelty and, and clubs like that. So there are there are some... I think that's that's obviously changing now that they've got a bit more involvement with the with the schools. Is there something similar happening with Glenrothes? Are you are you in it at the high schools and stuff like that? Aye, so, so the, the the young Glens were started by another co-manager, John uh, John Martin, uh, our secretary Robbie, and another committee member, Jamie. And we really really realised that you know we need a pathway. It's, it's too big to not have that. And you look at something like the Swifts, which is a, an amazing pathway. What they do for kids at the, the younger levels up until the Risa Scotland team is brilliant. So we're looking to, and sort of like the, the Kelty blueprint, to be like that sort of, and to get to that and have it ma- um, run itself and kind of maintain itself over the next few years. Um, so we're looking to get involved in all the other communities within Glen Rothes. Yeah, we, want we, want, we now start have a little. We now start to see kids coming to the games on a Saturday, so the kids now have a belonging and a, or an affinity with our first team. We've got a couple of players who are doing coaching for the young teams now as well. So there's that love of the club from the players to the young to the young players. So hopefully, like I said, in years to come, the young boys will push on to our teams and have that love for the club kind of thing. Yeah, and I, and I think a lot of people, I know um, sort of traditionalists, you know, particularly from the west of Scotland or the west, formerly the West Juniors, had that sort of, you know, I don't think they like the idea of community clubs, but it seems to be working for for everyone that's involved and everyone that has a community club. Well, I, I kind of think the SFA did that in a, in a roundabout way because the teams in Scotland couldn't afford young teams. They couldn't have Dunfermline and Rafe Rovers and East Fife County Beef. They can't afford teams at under nines all the way through to under sixteens, under eighteens, all that sort of stuff. They they had to develop this Fife Elite. They developed yeah. the Fife Elite and the four teams kind of cherry picked the boys from there. So it was up to the the ball was kind of put in the hands of the communities to say, listen, go and use set up these teams. And then when we and they basically cherry pick for hours, so the SAV can put that in their hands to create these teams and create these community teams. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And and as I said, I think it, it works. As, you know, there's there's so many decent examples of you know, like so, Spartans are probably the, the prime example. I think what they do and the community club yeah. they have there is is completely ingrained from a young age. The the ethos and oh, it's, it's amazing. Well, the Thistle would be another one, eh, with the Hutchie Vale uh, yep. concept. You know, they had Hutchie Vale. And, and they're, I mean, they're historic good uh, youth teams. Yeah. That's where we want to get to. And, 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 and like I said, they're historic teams. They've been running for years. We want to get there. We've just started. That's where we want to get to. And we're kind of aspiring to get to where your Kelties are. That's, that's our sort of aim. That's brilliant, Kev. That's brilliant, and uh, you're right. I, I I should well. I, I use Sparrow as an example because obviously the Lone League, but certainly we've had we've chatted a lot about Lovie and Fissel Hutchie Vale, and I spoke to guys like Sean McCarty, who was a part of the system, and they're mm. uh, they're very well known and quite famous for the pl- uh, players mm. they've produced. I even remember growing up, Tyne Castle had good youth teams as well. All the, like the Lovian teams were all uh, were very good when I was growing up. Um, in terms of having a, a good team at every age group. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you, well, in terms of Glen Office, obviously, I've, well, I've spoke to a few of the, obviously, the, some of the players there, and uh, you looked like you were just uh, out with the promotion bit. Obviously, you were at four points behind Hellfield Swifts. Um, but it looked like you still had a chance to, to uh, you know, get from them if, if that opportunity was there. Well, ah, yeah, you know, we're four points away. Um, and we're giving, I've got a game in hand, mind you. But there's, we've got 11 or 12 games still to play. That's 30 odd points. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of points to still play for in terms of playing Wednesdays and Saturdays and suspensions and injuries start coming up. So we were looking forward to, the last, me and John would certainly were looking forward to, you know what, let's ramp the pressure right up and give it a right good go. Because at the start of the season, it was basically the way we were. It was get a team in the park, and then we're a year behind everybody because we're starting afresh. It was a, it was a fresh start for everybody, the club, the players, everyone that was coming in, and it was let's get a team in the park and let's just have a good go at it. 
And then, so as, as the year's been going on, and we find ourselves, obviously, King Castle with well and deserved, and they're well ahead of everybody. Um, but we thought, let's have a right good goal these last 10 odd games and really put the pressure on Inverkeven and see if and see if they can do it. I mean, don't take anything away from Inverkeven. What they've done this year is phenomenal. Yeah. Considering they spend very little, I'd say they probably, I would go as far as say they probably spend the least in the two leagues. If not, probably spend the less. Aye, I would say they spend the less. So yeah. they've done brilliant. I think they've done really good. Hats off to them. But I felt as though the last 10 or so games, we could really put the pressure on them and and see how they would do. Because you never know that when you when you start playing Wednesday, Saturdays, you, you pick up injuries, you pick up suspensions, and you, 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 you lose a draw here, you maybe lose a game there. And before you know it, even if they won their game in hand, that's only seven points. That's only three games out of 10 or 12. Yeah, and uh, this is one of the, the, the things we've kind of discussed about uh, obviously in terms of lonely league it's kind of been called now no relegations Kelly Hart's got the title um, but before that I mean it's a lot to consider uh, considering like uh, well even in, in league football I think Rafe and Falkirk were a point apart uh, so it's crazy and, and the East of Scotland have sort of came out and said that they're thinking about sort of going down the lone league route of declaring uh, bonus the champions and uh, no relegations again but uh, the possibility of obviously, you know, the the two teams uh, top of the conferences getting promoted, but like, the the like because the proposal isn't even for the two the top two teams. It's only for Tyne Castle and Lobie and Thistle. Yeah. Um. So you look at that other conference. I mean, I'm just talking about Glen Office and Inverkeven. You look at that other conference, and you're looking at uh, Dunny Pace, who have, who are a very good team, um, who have done very well. They've been in the top three, I think, all throughout the season. You look, uh, Leaf could possibly catch Lovie and Thistle. There's there's not much in it there. Canula have got a, had a mountain of games to play. Would they be able to keep going? We don't like it. You know, there's there was a lot. Even Edinburgh, Edinburgh are miles off it in our league. I think yeah. they're they're four point three, maybe three points or four points behind us. So if they even caught their games and ourselves and them even slipped up, they could. So there's a lot of teams. That, it certainly is not If they do points per game. It's the disadvantage to a lot of teams there. Yeah, yeah, and, and I believe, well, I think uh, from what I gathered, obviously clubs are voting on the initial proposal the now, uh, but they do have another meeting on the 30th, um, I'm assuming, to either see what the outcome of the vote will be or obviously uh, put a new proposal across. What What's the sort of Glen Office position? Now, our, our position is really, that, so for next year, I mean, I, to be honest with you, I thought we were very lucky getting into this conference. I, I felt Glenrothes, being, being a new team in the east of Scotland, which started at the bottom, I thought they'd have been a first division, second division last year. So getting at the conferences, I thought we were very lucky. And then they had another vote for it, and they were doing conferences again. And it wasn't our vote. We felt as though there was scope there to go first division, second division. So our proposal really is just to bring that forward a year. We're going to be doing it after next season anyway. So I, I don't understand why we just don't bring it forward a year and kind of get that hierarchy um, structure in. Yeah, yeah. well, that makes sense, Kev. I mean, uh, there's still some uncertainty over, obviously, the Lone League as well, because if Kelty go up, um, I did hear that they're going to maybe move the team to 17 teams, but is that dependent on Kelty going up or not? Will we have two promoted from the East to Scotland? It's, it's all uh, ifs and buts at the moment. Aye. So, what the, I mean, again, what, one of the proposals was that, so they would... They would promote Lovian Thistle, Tyne Castle, and Inverkeven, and then but the fall after that season they would relegate five teams, which I I, I don't understand the, the the thinking behind that really. No, and and the fact that East of Scotland will have even more teams coming into it as well, it's going to be a um, yeah, it's going to it's going to be a strange one really. <laughs> yeah, I I, I I don't understand. For me, I, before the vote was even cast um, for the conferences, I. I I don't understand why we're doing conferences again. I would be a bit disappointed if I was the likes of Burnt Island and you know, your teams that have maybe been in it for a couple of years now and you're thinking, Christ, these teams had three years and they, and they stuck with the juniors. We, we went and took the jump as it is and people are, and they're still getting the same opportunities as me. So they're kind of getting nothing back for the trust that they showed in East of Scotland. 
Yeah, no, I get that. And it's it's quite an impassioned sort of point that you make across. Is it similar thinking to, do you know of, of other teams or do they feel sort of similar? I think, I, I, we've spoke to a couple of guys and obviously we know a couple of guys through just playing football and I've spoke to a couple of teams and, and that are in our, in our sort of position, obviously, and they, they feel the same. I mean, and like I said, it's not just uh, Glen Ross that are affected because Edinburgh and the miles away from us. You look at the other league, and you're looking at Dunny Page and uh, Lovian and Leaf. That that's a that's a that's a close league as well. So there's not just us; they will all feel the same, and they all feel as though they could have taken points off because I think 25 games is the most anyone's paid played. So there's a good seven or eight games there to play. Yeah, yeah. And is there any sort of thoughts on uh, a new proposal? Or is uh, what what is there anything sort of being suggested in terms of what should happen if if this one fails? Do you mean that, like if we miss out on the the first and second division? Yeah. But to be honest, it would it would be a, a probably a personal one for me and John. We we would be saying, I'd, I'd hate to see it null and void the null and void the league because then you're looking at. Well, no one's disadvantaged then. If you if we null and void this league, no one's disadvantaged. Absolutely no one. Yeah. Apart from well, that's that's lies. You could really say Tyne Castle would be disadvantaged because they're, they're well worthy winners. Um, they've they've not been beat by anyone and they've played everyone, so um, it'd be disadvantaged to them. But null and void, and and I'd I'd hate it to happen. But that would probably be the the only way that no one would be at a disadvantage then. Absolutely yeah. no one. At the moment, if they do it points per game, there's about four or five, possibly six teams who could be disadvantaged, who could really win. Probably looking at the last 10 games, saying, let's have a right good go. We've got midweek games. Let's have a right good go. They'll, they'll maybe have guys coming back for injuries and maybe have guys come... I know we did. We had guys coming back for injuries. We had Finn, who was a very important player for us. He was coming back. We had Calm, Kinnis, our captain, who had been out for a few games. So... You know, it, uh, it's it's a really hard one to do points per game for me personally. I I I, I don't agree with. It. If I, I I can't see the leagues getting possibly finished because we're going into the tenth of June now, so I can I, I can't see that happening. So for me, even if, just go to a first and second division, just do it. We're doing it anyway. Yeah. So just do it, and then you've, we've got ten ten new teams coming in. There's there's a basis of a good second division straight away uh, with the ten teams. Just do it. Yeah, no, that sorry, it makes sense if it's going to happen. Eh? I mean, it's it's it's, uh, it's I think it's difficult. Um, not so much for the east of Scotland, but the whole sort of football pyramid at the moment. Obviously, the west of Scotland's coming into it too, and they're going to have their conferences similar to the east of Scotland last season. It's uh, but it's a perfect time to shake up. I think I, I agree with you on that point. Uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, somebody like like Burn Island Shipyard, who have been members of the East of Scotland for years, and they're just and they've been treated the same as a team who's who's uh, like not even started yet. Um, and I, I'd be really unfairly treated if I was like on the committee of Burn Island thinking, you know what, we've we've invested a lot of time in the East of Scotland. And it doesn't matter who we are, really. We've been a member for a long time, and we compete in these leagues, and we're really we're we're being treated the same as anyone who's just who's just knocking on the door, really. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things. I mean, I don't really know the, the sort of behind the scenes, if you will, Kev. Uh, what happens? Uh, like, well, pr- more more so on the east of Scotland side, but um, I think it's a headache, obviously, given the amount of teams that are in the east of Scotland plus the amount of teams that are coming in. Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's, there'll be ten new te- nine new teams next year, and I'm out for coming back in. So that takes you to ten. And if, for whatever I say, if you just said you uh, was null and void, there's there's thirty odd teams. That's what thirty four teams in your leagues in the conferences would be. Um, so that's 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 big conferences. And if you're, I don't even know how they're going to do that. How are you going to do that in our first division? Is it going to be a top six of of each division? Yeah, I don't know. That, that's not out there, so why give yourself that headache then now of of deciding that uh, for for in two years' time? Why not just start up a first division and a second division now? Yeah, yeah, and it's a good as I said, Kevin. I think it's a good point, but um, it's tough. It's a tough one. Like, and I, I think this is 
what kind of all boils down to, even before you know decisions were made and, and votes of the SPFL and stuff like that, um, you're never going to make everyone happy, basically. No, you're not. And I, I do get that. You're, everybody's not going to be happy. I mean, but I just, I just feel as though points per game just doesn't work in the conferences. I can see it working in the other leagues and, 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 and teams having to take on the chin. Well, listen, you know, we had the same amount of games to play and we didn't win enough games. But also, we, you had the inf- inter-conference games as well that teams still had to play against each other. There was The, the, the variables in the conferences were, were just a, a bit more complex to just say, that, you know what, it's points per game. Because when you look at it, Canoe had a great start to the season, but they've only played 17 games. Yeah, They'd only played 17 games four weeks ago. They'd only played 17 games. So their points per game is, is two points per something. But at the end of the season, what would that have been? Like I say, injuries, suspensions, what ifs, buts, you know. Yeah. Who knows where they've been at the end of the year. And But because they had a right good start and they've done well for the first 17 games, their points per game takes them... I think third in the league. Yeah, that, it's, and that, it's easy. Yeah, and that's a, that's actually a good point because it's I know uh, the the Lone League done points per game, but they didn't have to worry about the the games between each conference and stuff like that that East of Scotland do. Hmm. Ah, I, I mean, if, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not moaning. We we were we were just unlucky. What it turned out our in our conference games, most of our away games, and then the conference was against the the top six teams. So we had we only had Leaf at home. We had to play Lovian away. We had to play Dunny Pace away. We had to play St Andrews away. You know, we played all the their, their top teams away from home, and we played um, the lower league teams at our place. So it was just pure. It was pure bad luck for us. But it's just your luck in a conference game. So and they're still in a conference games to go. So to to do it points per game. I, I, maybe, I just can't work it out, really, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a sore head for someone like <laughs> trying, to, trying to work it all out. But... Aye, aye. And that's, and that's what I'm saying. I would hate, I would hate it to happen, but for, for the, there's, a, there's a chance here that four or five teams will be disadvantaged because of points per game. So for me, if, if, if we can't go to a first and second division this for next season, just null and void, and everybody will start the fresh. That would that would be my options. That would be my proposals. That's what I would be saying. Uh, the west of Scotland, in terms of titles and stuff, it, it probably matters less to them the fact that they're they're moving to the west of Scotland. So they're they're going to be under a sort of new league structure anyway. So, um... I the west of Scotland. I mean, that, I said that to uh, John O'Leary there. That's that's a cup competition. That's that's going to be great for. For the likes of the club getting maybe a, a, a good team from Glasgow through out of the war out, or us getting bus journeys through to the west and playing the teams maybe in a cup because having them in the pyramid is, is brilliant and they're all getting a fresh start. So really, them finishing the league in whatever position, it will probably annoy them a little bit that they've not had to, they've not been able to finish the league, but they're, they're having a new, they're having a fresh start next season anyway. So. They'll just be they'll just be raring to go really the West Scotland teams. Yeah, but you're hoping maybe you know if if there was plans in place uh, for obviously the first and second divisions and whatnot, are you hoping maybe that that could be you know advocated for for the following season, basically a fresh start for East of Scotland too? Uh, well, the body they said that there's going to be a first and second division anyway. That's that's been decided. That's already been decided. There's going to be a first and second. The what would that be? Twenty one, twenty two. Season yeah. 21, 20. So there's already going to be that. What I'm saying is, we ju- just bring that forward. Yeah. And uh, I did hear, I don't know how reliable this is, um, but I did hear that, because we've been talking about it quite a lot, uh, Kev, but there will be, a, I believe the South Challenge Cup's going to be a mandatory. So it's going to be like a Scottish non-league cup for including the West team. So it's going to, going to be brilliant if that's, if that's the case. Aye, brilliant. I'd, I would love that. Like I said, you, you know, you, the, when you play a Glasgow team going through there and that Glasgow team coming through, it's, it's always they're always well supported, you, you know, and it's always good banter when you go through there. You're always very welcome when you go through there. Um, so, and again, it would be a massive cup to play in. You, you would get your players to buy into it, that it was a good cup to play in. Like I say, it's a, if you get an away tie, it's, it's a good bus journey day out for the boys. So 
to have the way the Scotland in in the pyramid, it's a massive plus. But to be honest, I can't believe it's taken that long for for Scotland to set up this sort of pyramid. You know that it kind of annoys me. Scottish football. I mean, we we seem to <laughs> really struggle in terms of organisation. You've just got to look at what's happening at the top, and you think, you know what? Non-league football is more organised than the top half. Yeah, um, I, I've said it in such words uh, uh, as well. I've, you know, basically, we're kind of progressing. Uh, all non-leagues kind of progressing and kind of forward thinking in the way that we're doing things. We're we're going about it the right way, but. Um, I think the SPFL in particular could probably learn a few things from, from the way we're going about it. Oh, definitely. I, I can't believe that it's 2020 and we're still having four games a season. St. Johnson against Hamilton four times a year. And I, I get the whole Rangers Celtic thing. I'd like would, That's why Sky maybe would pay a couple of pounds to watch. But, but I think it's ridiculous. We've got 40 teams and we've got four leagues. We've got guys uh, in, in the SPL just want to copy what England are doing. But England's unique. England England works. Ours, doesn't he? I mean, I would hate to be the chairman of Annan having to travel up to Peterhead twice a year. And suddenly Peterhead's travelling down to Annan and things like that. It must cost them a, an absolute barrel load. Yeah, and I think that's why it's quite unique at this level. Um, you know, you're only playing teams kind of home and away. And I think it's more interesting for fans because you're only getting your one or two visits to, you know, depending on Cup as well, but to, to wherever, to see teams, to see different teams, different experiences, that's what's great about this level. Oh, it's brilliant. We, I mean, we've had a few, obviously, like I said, we, we get the bus when it's a bit of a journey away, so we, we, we've had supporters on on our bus, and it's, it's been a great crack. It's been brilliant, Banter. You're, you're, taking, you're taking supporters down with you. You're going into, I think, we were, like the people strip for us was, it was a brilliant day. It wasn't a great game of football. It was howling wind. It was soaking. But the day out was brilliant. The, the social club that they used, it was packed because it, obviously it's a rugby town and the rugby was on. But it was brilliant banter. And just going away for the days, that's what football is all about for me. Just on a Saturday up early and away in the football. Brilliant. Yeah, and certainly miss it, Kev. Certainly miss it, my man. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know what? Like I said at the start, I, I don't, I don't know what to do with myself anymore because that's that's what I do. And my my wife's the same. She she just said to me yesterday, she goes, "I, I don't really like this. Uh, you know, a, a Saturday is uh, you go to the football and I go to the shops. We've we've never seen so much of each other." Oh God, it's mental, mate. But we kind of I, I kind of asked some of the boys about my team in the season. I don't know how much you are knowledge of the Lone League, uh, but. Was there any sort of standouts for you in terms of your players or, or some of the guys in East of Scotland that deserve a be mention? No, that, you know what? The, the, the standard's been really good. The standard has been really good. As, and I, I, you look at it as a collective. We played Time Castle and they were definitely the best team we've played this year in terms of how they played. Uh, they had a, a couple of good players. I mean, so as a collective... Uh, You've got to say Time Castle. Uh, Dunny Pace, I really like... We've, we've played Dunny Pace twice now. They beat us in the Cup and we beat them in the league. But they're a very good... They play, they play brilliant. I, I really like how they play. They try and play. They, they pass the ball. I mean, they, obviously, they play in Astro, so they've got the opportunity to do that. But they've got a, a, a very good couple of players there as well. St Andrews are a good outfit. Edinburgh have got a couple of good players there as well. Young players. It's a young team, Edinburgh. But they've got a lot of good players there as well. Um, a couple of players that I like. So the standard's really good, and there is a good few players out there. And I think you know will be a credit to if we went to the first second division. The standard would be very good. Yeah, and that's good to hear. And it's a saying I've I've been hearing quite a lot of Kev about the standard. Obviously, with like uh, well, mainly the loan league because some of the players that have came down like Nicky Lowe and. And uh, Nathan Austin and stuff, but uh, I think it I think it trickles down as well. I think East of Scotland. Uh, you mentioned Tyne Castle there. Um, some of the players that went to them that have uh, been in the loan league and higher up, I think Tyne Castle have a fantastic team and could easily do well in the the Premiership. Oh, without a doubt, the, the, the way I mean, we we played them at the start of the year and they beat us two 0 and no, they deserve to win, but I mean they weren't light years ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. But I think like you're saying that the players that are coming in, because people now enjoy going watching 
the non-league football, it allows teams to maybe go and spend that little bit extra. Like, I mean, like East Stirling can do on Nicky Lou, like, like Kelty can do for, for extra players. You know, Hilla Beef are getting very good attendances now. Dundonald get good attendances because the football's entertaining. Or they can afford, like, like I mean, Dundonald are a, a well-run club, so they, they can afford to maybe go and splash out. I mean, they've just signed Ross Much and Liam Craig for next year. Two very good players. Yeah, Ross, uh, obviously I spoke to Ross. It uh, wasn't out that he'd been going to Dundonald, but I had Ross's, you know, I mean, before, obviously, he took his break from football, he was playing pretty much in the first team at Kelty, so that says a lot, yeah. you know, for some of the guys that are, are brought in. But what, what's the future for Glenn Rothfuss, Kev? What, what, what do you think, where he's going to be? Well, like I said, this this was our first year. This was a fresh start for us. This was this was a massive fresh start for us because, like I said, I played for them in 2014 and we were picked just to the post on the last day for promotion and I went away from football. And then I came back a couple of years ago to take over uh, with manager and I'm thinking nothing's changed here. It, it stagnated. Nothing had moved on. They hadn't, hadn't got any better. Than, um, so it was about starting afresh. So... Me and John have done that. We've got a team in the park and we've added the quality here and there. And we really thought, you know, next year we'll have a right good push because we've kind of got our squad together now. So we're looking forward to the last 10 games. But So we were going to have a good push and then on for next year. But again, it was like I was saying at the start, they started up the Young Glens. We started up a pathway. There's a belonging at the club now. We bought the facilities. We now own Warren and the pitches out there. So I don't know if you... I don't know if you've been to Warrow, but it's, there's, apart from Kelty, I don't think there's anyone in Fife with these sort of facilities. We've got our own social club. We've got all in the one area. So, you know, it's a one-stop shop. Once you come there, you play football there and you, and you have your, your drink there and things like that as well. After the game, your hospitality uh, is there as well. So, you know, everything's in place. And I, I said, to, when I first came back, I said to the chairman and the committee, we need to go to Scotland. That's where, that's where everything's going. That's where the direction of football is going. It's, it's better for football. It's like we need to get a player pathway. You know, and credit to the committee and the chairman, they've, they've, they've went for it. We've, um, we've, we've now got the social club and we've now, John O, uh, Jamie and Robbie, they started up the Young Glens and we've got about nine or ten teams. I could be totally wrong but because um, they have new teams adding every week. We've got an under-20s team for next year as well. Um, so it's just about keep we're, we're on the kind of the express training now, and it's just about keeping that going and keeping working hard. So it eventually, like something like the Swiss, kind of maintains itself after that. Brilliant, Kev. And uh, I've said this to a few teams. I think I'll be a busy man when football comes back. Uh, I don't think I have been to War Out, so I'm definitely looking forward to a wee bit visit. Like that sounds amazing. Well, but I, I mean, we hopefully we'll get Kelly in there. We can get the War Out parked and. Earn ourselves a couple of pounds. <laughs> Be good to see. Because that, that's been one of the great things. We've, we've had a great following this year. Our attendances, our average attendance is the biggest in the two conferences. So we've had a great following, and we're only at the start of our journey. So we just want to just really kick on. And I just, like I've seen, I was saying, I don't want to go through the motions of conferences again and go, let's just kick on. Let's yeah. just move football forward and move these to Scotland forward. Brilliant, Kev. Just, we're, we're all just missing football and we just want to move on. Yeah, brilliant, mate. Yeah, I'm hoping, oh God, I hope, I don't know obviously when it's going to be back, but hopefully it's this year at least. And uh, no, I look forward to hopefully coming down and seeing Glen uh, As I say, I know a few of the players there and I think what you're, what you're saying in that is brilliant and I think you're going the right way about it. Um, God, it's, it sounds amazing, mate. I can't wait. <laughs> Ah, yeah, you know what? We're we're all excited now because we we've, we've got people buying into the the whole project and you know really making it a club for the for Glen Office. Like I say, it's a massive town. It's a massive, massive town. Where, and we're a sleeping giant. Like, like you said, you didn't know much about us, but we'd won the Scottish Cup, so that means that you you've done something in the, right in the past. Yeah. So it's just about just about stripping it all away again, making sure the foundations are there, and just and then just actually taking it forward and. And we'll get there. We're just a bit, we're just got to work hard, and we've got the players buying into that as well. We just want to carry on. Just want to kick on. 
brilliant, Kev. Uh, I appreciate you coming on and chatting, uh, getting a wee bit of background to Glen Rothis and the, the excellent work that the club have done, and like you yourself and, and the, the team there. I, I hopefully, uh, there'll be a resolution to this to Scotland soon. Hopefully, we'll hear something and it, it works out for you as pal. At the end of the day, it's, it's their ball away. They get to decide who, who kicks it and, and where we kick it and when we kick it. So, we'll just, I'm, I'll not be going in a half. I'll not be giving up the football if it's not what I like. Uh-huh. I'll still be all day. Brilliant, mate. Stay safe and all the best, all right? Brilliant, pal.